Hello again, this is Russ Williams, and I want to uh, provide you with this instructional video on a strategy we like to call chain reactions. This is another one of those strategies that makes its way down from the AP classroom. Again, so many times AP students are asked to respond to an essay prompt specifically is designed to look for cause and effect. Students have studied cause and effect since, you know, probably their time in elementary school. Here though, where history gets a little more difficult as the students increase in grade level and definitely by AP, is that those asking the question are really looking for what are the long-term causes versus the immediate causes and then what are the immediate effects versus the long-term effects of a particular subject matter. So the chain reaction strategy is a, is a cause and effect strategy, but it, it goes a step further. It really uh, prompts the students to distinguish between short-term causes from long-term causes. And on the flip side, short-term effects from the long-term effects. I'm going to show you the, the two-page template first and then go back and explain some things. So as you can see, it, uh, the, the two pages that the students are going to complete when they do this strategy uh, look very similar. Uh, notice some, some subtle differences though. Uh, the event will be the same. However, on the far left side here, so on page one, you're going to be thinking about the long-term causes of this event. Okay. Think about long-term as uh, years in the making, larger developments or trends that we would uh, ultimately uh, measure and you know consider over multiple years or even decades, could be even centuries. So have the students come up with as many long-term causes as, as they're able to. This particular strategy, while I'm thinking about it, really lends itself to a group activity uh, because you really want a lot of uh, brainstorming. You want to have a, a larger group of or a collection of students that can share their ideas and and probably offer uh, different you know points of learning that that they've uh, really uh, collected in in their studies. So, like I said, the brainstorming session within a group tends to uh, do a better job with this uh, with this strategy. So then they go on to the immediate causes of this particular event. Uh, this would be, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like the day of the, you know, the event or even, you know, a week before. This could be, you know, a few years building up. I mean, when you're really here, the the sign is that you're you're discussing probably the influences of the actual people, the individuals that are going to experience the event. So what did they what did they do to bring about these immediate calls these immediate causes? Or it could have been an environmental call, such as you know, it could have been a famine, uh, an immediate cause. Whereas you could see a long term uh, cause being something related to just um, the, the failure to replenish uh, the nutrients in the soil or just uh, environmental changes it could be more long-term. The immediate cause could be the actual uh, famine that's, you know, maybe last two or three years. Um, so again, think of the buildup, the immediate buildup. Uh, this is more long range. And this is more uh, kind of the, the build-in or the bridge directly to the event. Notice this column ESPN. So from the ESPN strategy, uh, this allows us to classify, to categorize these causes, and then on the second page, the effects. So 
are these immediate causes, are they economic in nature, are they social, are they political, are they environmental in nature? And yes, we know that environmental doesn't start with an N, but just go with it, all right? Um, and all you have to put here, all the students have to put here is a simple letter. If, if it's economic, you know, put the E. It could be both, it could be economic and social. Now, if you really want to push the students, especially if it is a group activity, you may uh, uh, direct them to write down a specific example of, uh, of the economic or of the social or you know, kind of a, a brief explanation. But I think for most um, instances, I think just simply putting the ESPN uh, will suffice here. Again, on page two, it's the same event, but now you're looking at the effects. We're approaching it from the immediate effects or the immediate impact of the event. All right, so the immediate aftermath, again, in the, in the days, in the weeks, even in the few years, you know, following this event. Again, still talking about kind of the same players from the immediate causes. Uh, what, what happens next uh, to those players? to those eyewitnesses and uh, those uh, his key historical um, individuals that are living through the event. Obviously, we're going to ESPN it over here, the same thing uh, as we did with the immediate causes, the immediate effects, immediate impact. Are they uh, economic, social, political, or environmental in nature? And then we're going to really look ahead to the long term. So. It might be that you start this strategy and perhaps you even get this far and you might have to come back, you know, in the, in the next unit. Maybe the event basically ends the unit of study and you're not, or the students are not going to know the long-term effect or impact until a unit or two, you know, in the weeks coming. Or... It might be that you choose to use this strategy as one of those big nine weeks or semester exam review activities. So if that's the case, uh, a lot of this is review material, so they may be able to sit and do both, uh, both pages uh, in one sitting. So now that you know what the template looks like, let's go back and Let's look at a generic example that maybe you want to consider sharing with students. This is going to be in the, the manual. Um, so if you just follow along, just kind of use an everyday you know, occurrences that these students are familiar with, let's look at the event first. Miss the school bus. Okay. So long-term cause could be I've been relying way too long on my parents to wake me up. The immediate cause, my parents are out of town. So the event, I missed the bus. So we should be able to see the difference there, long-term to, to the immediate, uh, more of a routine versus uh, the events that actually happen, the, the culmination. And then the effect of missing the school bus, the immediate is, I was marked absent, received attention, long-term, I begin to set an alarm when parents are away. So, you know, we'll learn from it. Long term, I'm better off for it. Learn my lesson, so to speak. Uh, down here, I played football at home with my three older brothers. Well, growing up, that's long term. So the immediate cause of, again, this event that all district MVP was good enough to play on varsity all four years. So the ultimate event, again, all district. An immediate effect of that uh, offers to play ball in college. Long-term effect, half of my college tuition was covered through an athletic scholarship. Okay, so if you, you know, break it down with these simple uh, examples that they're familiar with, that they should be familiar with, uh, I think it'll help them to see the difference between the long-term, the immediate, both in the cause and in the effect categories. Ultimately, here's, here's why we want uh, our students to, uh, to do this strategy. Uh, future essay prompts, whether they be AP style essays or just essays that they may see in college. Um, 
they're going to be worded like this. Uh, the first one is more of like a world example. Discuss the political and environmental, so we see the ESPN coming out here, discuss the political and environmental factors contributing to the Mongol invasions during the 13th century and the economic consequences of those invasions across Eurasia. Okay, so even though we're not specifically seeing the words cause and effect, you may want to show them these prompts from time to time to, to remind them these are cause, this is a cause and effect question. Uh, factors contributing, consequences, it's cause and effect. And again, notice that, you know, AP stands for answer the prompt. Okay, I know it stands for advanced placement, but, you know, answer the prompt. The prompt is specifically asking for political environmental factors that contribute. So political environmental causes, and then it wants economic consequences or economic effects. And notice it doesn't say immediate or long term. Okay, but if you get them in the, I guess the the routine of, of thinking about the long term and the short term, it actually gives them more ammo. Okay, it it gives them more. Um, more to use in terms of, um, you know, let me put it this way. It's, it's so difficult when they sit down and actually write these essays to come up with a lot of specific details, especially a lot of like specific, like immediate cause or immediate effect events. It's hard for the students to do. So they're really going to be banking on the long-term developments. They're going to have a better or an easier time probably remending, uh, remembering some of those long-term trends, some of those long-term uh, developments. So if they can pull from each, it just, again, it, it, it increases um, kind of the, the volume of information that, that they can discuss because, again, it's, it's difficult to be specific, to be really specific with, with your details. Uh, as you as you take these exams, they're in the room on the spot. This isn't a research paper. Uh, they have to recall it from their knowledge. So even though the question may not specifically say long term or short term, if they just get in the practice, it's gonna help them down the road of just again building their repertoire of of good information and good details. Um, next question is an A-push question. Describe how economic conditions led to increased immigration to the U.S. between 1820 and 1859. So in this part of the question, in this in this buildup, in this in this ultimately conditions that increase that led to the increased immigration. So it led to, again, caused. Okay, it's a cause and effect question. But because they give us this, this time frame here that's almost 40 years, um, it's really inviting the long term and the short term. Okay, it's, it's um, definitely looking for kind of the bigger trends that are going to take years uh, in order to, to develop, to fully develop. You think about, for instance, a lot of this is going to be tied to the early industrial revolution, the market economy. Uh, and this is, again, it's not something that just happens overnight. It's more of a long-term development. So it's probably better to take that approach in a question like this. So the student in their head needs to be thinking about those long-term trends that are happening, that are occurring over almost a 40-year period. The second part of the question, discuss the social and political effects of the increase in immigration. Okay, Again, since the question doesn't really define it or doesn't really specify, this could be the immediate social and political effects or it could be long-term social and political effects. Um, so again, putting them in the practice to find both, to be thinking about both when these major events occur that have you know a lot of you know, factors and consequences. Just the practice 
will build the knowledge base so that they can pull from kind of both banks, the long term and the short term, because they're going to be desperate to pull when they actually sit down and, and, and take these take these tests and answer these essay questions. Uh, one other thing, let me give you an example. Uh, we'll use here a uh, world history uh, eighth grade example. So the event, this is the classic, the fall of the Roman Empire. So some long-term causes, a lot of long-term causes you could use for this. I just you know, had to choose uh, some here. So have inflation, brazen circuses. You have this, you know, centuries of political rivalries and political instability, steady growth of, of Christianity. And then you have your more immediate causes as, you know, as we get closer to 476, um, the, the, you know, the trademark, you know, date for the fall of Rome in the West. Anyway, you have the, the, the Huns, the invasion of the Huns, the, of course, the Germanic, subsequent Germanic invasions. Um, you have a lot of, uh, inept leadership, it seems, especially from you know, Romulus Augustus, the last Roman emperor. Uh, you have the sack of Rome that ultimately is going to depose Romulus Augustus by Odysseur or Odasser, if you prefer. Uh, you have a lack of allegiance from the Germanics that are serving in the legions in the years you know, leading up to the fall of Rome. You're not going to get you know, very, little, you know, very little support from the Byzantines. And, you know, overstretched and overextended borders, sometimes it, can, it could go either way. It could be more of a long term or we could see that in the, in the final years, it really ultimately kind of uh, brought Rome to its knees. These, these borders that were just impossible to, uh, to manage, uh, they were porous and this, you know, led to the um, Germanic invasion. So, yeah, because of that, this could easily go over here in long term as well. I think some could be interchangeable. Again, uh, column of ESPN, notice some, for instance, the Germanic invasions. We could say there's political, there's economic, and there's even environmental uh, issues involved. Maybe the inept leadership from uh, Romulus Augustus, maybe that's more political. Um, let's look over here at the fall of Rome. And now the immediate effects, um, you have the barbarian king of Italy, you, which is political and social. You have uh, now the Byzantine emperor is really the last uh, Roman emperor. You have the decay of the Roman infrastructure. Um, the formula for concrete. Uh, along those lines was was lost apparently for centuries till the modern era um, or the early modern era. You have these power, these bloody power struggles and these feuds that will you know follow. And uh, of course, it doesn't seem different than what we've already seen, but you know it continues. I guess you could say um, the Romans also they find increased guidance through the bishop of Rome which in itself could be political or social. Um, some of these, such as, you know, infrastructure, concrete, economic, but what could be an environmental uh, connection there as well. So again, you, you have some options or students have some options. And then finally on the long term, you have the, the dark ages just around the corner, the decentralization of Western society, the, eventually the emergence of feudalism, and then, of course, you have uh, the growing power and influence of the Roman Catholic Church as kind of the, the institution of stability, uh, what's left of, of Roman power uh, to guide the people through you know, these dark ages. So uh, there you go. There's an example of chain reactions. Again, the major focus of this strategy, cause and effect, but uh, distinguishing between the long term and the short term of each and also categorizing them by economic, social, political, or environmental uh, issues. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope uh, you enjoy using chain reactions with your students.